it's always a shame when statistics like that come to light because I feel like it further enhances the kind of stigma and stereotypes surrounding that resistance training and just training in general is something for men. So I'm going to be honest with you, uh, th this is going to be a slightly different video. It sounds really weird, but I want you to bear with me. I'm not going to give a huge amount of input on this. What I'm doing this video for is more to bring awareness and light to a video that I think is really important. And that's Natasha's video, where she speaks about how your menstrual cycle really impacts your diet, workout and results. Obviously, this doesn't directly apply to me, but the majority of my audience, about 91% of you, are women and this could very much apply to many of you. And I feel like Natasha raises some really good points throughout this video that need to be addressed and need to be seen by more if possible. And there are a few points that I'd almost like to add on top of Natasha's just here and there to just kind of give my input based on my understanding. And I'll put my hands up and happily admit that Natasha knows far more about this topic and subject than I do, but I'm, I'm trying to learn more because I can then hopefully better help more of you. Uh, also, forgive me, I am covered in cat hair because obviously cat. But obviously before we crack on with the video, we're going to cover the, the quick bits and bobs. If at any point you decide you like the video and care about what I have to say, perhaps, then please let me know you like the video by liking the video. 1300 likes is the goal, so if we reach out, it'd be bloody splendid. I would very much appreciate it. If you haven't already, please do consider clicking the red button down below to subscribe to the channel and maybe even the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week, twice a week. And if you don't click the red button, I'm going to assume that you don't like cats. And if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, then please do consider dropping it down below in the comment section for comment question of the week and I shall do so. It's headpiece. I'm not gonna lie, I took it out of the box. I was like, you know what? That's kind of cute. It's like bear ears. It's like little bear ears. I think it's really sweet. <laughs> I want the bear the cat's gonna have a great time with these. In all honesty, this is probably one of my favorite videos of Natasha's. As you know, I'm a big fan of Nat Natasha and what she does. And I think this is very much a topic that needs to be addressed and a topic that needs more attention. Let's talk about periods. Let's talk about menstrual cycles. I'm actually on my period right now, as we speak. That's live news coming straight from me to you. It's always interesting because it sounds like a bit of an observation, I guess. I grew up in a house of only women. So from the age of six, I, I lived with my mum and my sister and only those two. Therefore, exposure to things such as periods, etc., etc., were very normal to me from an early age. But it's, it's still something I find interesting that when you bring this topic up, even in modern society, I think, especially when you talk about the, the topic almost to men in a lot of cases, many of them feel almost uncomfortable hearing about it and discussing it or just knowing about it as if it's not just a normal and natural bodily function. But again, may, maybe that is largely dependent on upbringing. I'm not sure, but it was just an interesting observation that came to my mind. A recent review of the sports science research found that studies with female-only test subjects made up only 6% of the literature published in leading journals between 2014 and 2020. It's always a shame when statistics like that come to light because I feel like it further enhances the kind of stigma and stereotypes surrounding that resistance training and just training in general is something for men, which is kind of like a, a very outdated belief and kind of idea that men lift weights, women don't, etc, etc. Thankfully, over recent years particularly, more and more women are getting into resistance training. And I actually had this conversation with somebody in the old Instagram DM just the other day where we spoke about how it's so great to see over the last few years how popular just training in general has become for all genders and it's no longer kind of purely isolated to, to men. And we mentioned this in the podcast before. I think it's like 40% of the members at one of the gyms I go to are women, which is, which is fantastic because... 10 years ago or so when I started training, I, I probably has a guess to be about 5% or so because you would rarely see women in the gym. But now again, it's become more normalized and, and the, the benefits of resistance training for all genders have, have kind of been highlighted. It is fantastic to see that training, resistance training, whatever it may be, is no longer kind of seen to be a thing for men. It's now seen to be something that humans do if they want to do it which is great but then like i said it's just a shame when statistics like this come to light because uh, like i did mention it further almost enhances that kind of idea that training is for men it's not for anyone else which is just not true but we are actually going to skip forward to about halfway through the video where the video becomes a lot more training focused which is something i really want to address and discuss because obviously training is my primary area of interest a great place to start is a major review of the research in 2021 first up they looked at how athletes perceive 
perceived their performance to be affected by their menstrual cycles. Across the five studies and 415 subjects, every paper found that most athletes believe that their performance is affected by their menstrual cycle, whether that's strength, speed or power. It's actually something I hear quite a lot, is that when t women are typically are getting to certain kind of phases of their menstrual cycle, they, they often predict a change in performance. And obviously Natasha comes to conclude that there was no change, which we will discuss very shortly. I think that's a very relevant point when it comes to the, the psychology behind training. But I just wanted to kind of highlight that quickly now because we are going to further elaborate on it very shortly. But a systematic review dedicated to strength research in females from 2020 found that there was no change in strength performance and concluded that strength related characteristics appear to remain invariable between menstrual cycle phases on average and again mentioned high levels of inter-individual variability. Again that very much comes down to the fact that everybody is different, people respond in different ways, people tolerate different things, it's very much about the individual and how your feelings, emotions, performance and all sorts during different stages of your menstrual cycle may be very different to your best friend, your sister, whoever it may be. So again, it's all about coming, coming down to doing what's best for you. But the big thing there is obviously Natasha has mentioned that there's no change in performance. But one of the things that kind of uh, that came to my mind is obviously no change in performance, fantastic. That essentially means you don't have to alter your training depending on the stage of your menstrual cycle. Bloody fantastic, it makes life a bit easier when looking at like almost auto-regulation and things along those lines. But one of the things that kind of tickled me, during different stages of your menstrual cycle, hormone levels will fluctuate. And that's what many people believe to be one of the biggest contributing factors of changes in, in skin and essentially potential breakouts with spots and whatnot. Spots that are largely related to hormones often come not from heightened or lowered levels of hormones, but more fluctuations in that hormones. You typically see that a lot in individuals when they're taking performance enhancing drugs is they'll go on like a cycle of steroids essentially and then, then you kind of have the idea of I'm gonna have really bad acne or something on cycle or on the on the drugs. Being on the drugs and at a stable level is usually not so much a cause of the acne. What's more often the cause is the changes in the hormone levels. So as your testosterone and estrogen is, is going up or down, wherever it may be, your skin may break out due to those fluctuations, but once it stabilizes, skin tends to stabilize as well. Again, doesn't apply to everybody, and that was obviously an example using performance enhancing drug users, but that has been heavily theorized regarding contributing factors to, to women when they are experiencing breakouts themselves. And another con consideration that kind of bounced off that was, although there have been no changes in performance, which is good, could there potentially be a change in recovery? Because estrogen is, is a pretty important hormone when considering recovery. Like, estrogen is a big driver of recovery. So if your estrogen levels are decreasing, depending on the stage of the menstrual cycle, would that potentially negatively impact your ability to recover from sessions during that lower estrogen period? I'm not saying it is or isn't, I'm just merely theorizing that and kind of asking that question because it's something that I've been pondering after watching this video. Yeah, I've spoken to many men about this when they look at performance enhancing drugs as well. They're like, oh, I want my testosterone levels to be as high as possible, my estrogen to be as low as possible. So, well, no, you don't. Estrogen, like I said, is a big driver of recovery, so you definitely don't want it to be as low as possible. You want it to be in a, in a healthy range and at a healthy ratio, so you're not developing symptoms that, such as gynecomastia, but you're also optimizing recovery. So again, it's just something that came to my mind of whether that fluctuation in estrogen levels could potentially lead to fluctuations in recovery capabilities, which although will not dictate your performance on the day, could be a consideration when looking at intensity, could be a consideration when looking at volume, could be so a consideration when just looking at how you perform, not due to your inability to do so, but more how it may impact your recovery afterwards. So we've got three studies that properly control their test subjects. They're generally trying to see whether you make more strength and muscle building improvements by training in the follicular phase compared to the luteal phase. One of them found that they made improvements in hypertrophy and in strength. One paper found that they only made improvements in strength, but not hypertrophy. And one paper found that they made no improvements in hypertrophy or strength. I mean, we're only even looking at two training outcomes, strength and hypertrophy. What about the others? Recovery, power, aerobic capacity, and aerobic performance. Those haven't been tested. Well, I guess the, the answer to my question is that it hasn't been tested, so we aren't sure about the recovery capabilities during different stages of the menstrual cycle, which is a shame because it just strikes me as something that needs to be addressed and needs to be understood. Because ultimately, if we're looking at just optimizing performance for athletes of all genders, and not even just athletes, just consumers of the fitness world of all genders, surely you want to best understand how the body of 
every gender works. Because otherwise it's on somewhat of an unfair playing field if we've kind of got so much information surrounding men and their capabilities to recover, to perform, etc, etc. But then you flip to other agendas and we're kind of in the dark and we don't really know what's going on. It just highlights a, a mass gender dominance in science. It also highlights just a massive grey area in which when people ask you questions, you don't know the answer because the answer hasn't been tested. Which again, it is a shame, which is to us the, the reason why I wanted to make this video. Just to highlight the fact that something needs to be addressed and something needs to change. I completely agree with everything Natasha said. I think this is a bloody fantastic video and a bloody interesting video. I've, I've learned a lot from it, but there should be more to learn. There should be more research done there should be more evidence to compile and we should be able to understand and learn a bit more about how different genders respond to just different periods of life. One study published last year found that the menstrual cycle phase did have an impact of our enjoyment and our rate of perceived exertion, which is basically how intense we feel we're working during our workouts. And they found that during the luteal phase specifically, subjects showed signs of enjoying workouts a little bit less and finding them harder. Yeah, again, it very much comes down to the individual. I think the, the big thing to remember, this is something I wanted to address, was the psychological impact of different stages of the menstrual cycle on your performance. And again, although we know that performance hasn't changed, I think ultimately, if you believe something and convince yourself of something, whatever you have believed and convinced yourself of could impact how you perform. If you go in with the kind of idea of, oh, I'm at this stage of my menstrual cycle, therefore I feel like I'm gonna be weaker, therefore I feel like my performance is gonna be worse. Because you're almost telling yourself that, you're reinforcing that belief, and now you're expecting that belief to come true, therefore could that actually impact how you perform. Not due to the fact that you're in a different stage of your menstrual cycle, but more due to the fact that psychologically you've convinced yourself otherwise. That's highlighted primarily by when Natasha spoke about how the rate of perceived exertion was different, so workouts felt harder, is do they feel harder because they are harder, or do they feel harder because people potentially convince themselves that they will be harder due to whatever stage of their menstrual cycle they're currently in. And I, I actually have a client that has PCOS, and she often comes to me and says uh, it's peak week. She kind of predicts herself to perform badly and almost convinces herself of that. And obviously things are a bit different when you're considering things like PCOS, but it, there are still a lot of similarities there. What you can do during those periods where you feel like things might feel a bit harder or things might feel a bit off is auto-regulate. So essentially alter the session depending on how you feel and potentially your ability to recover as well. So maybe decrease volume, decrease intensity, whatever it may be. Auto-regulate if you need to, but that can apply for any reason. It doesn't necessarily need to be due to different stages of your menstrual cycle. It could be auto-regulation because you didn't sleep enough. It could be auto-regulation because you didn't eat enough. Auto-regulation just because you're not feeling 100% in yourself for whatever reason that may be. Auto-regulation is something we can all benefit from and it's something we can all consider. It's a new day and I get sent 10 new TikToks prescribing, telling me how I should be working out based on where I am in my menstrual cycle. It might be Pilates, it might be swimming, it might be a walk, it might be a yoga flow, it might be HIIT, it might be strength training, all based on where I am in my menstrual cycle. Your training should be largely determined by your goals and not necessarily where you are in your menstrual cycle. But in terms of that is largely the video. I, I Like I said, I just wanted to bring a bit of light to a really good video made by Natasha. And a video I think many people should watch and if you have the time to watch it, I would strongly recommend doing so because it's like I said, probably one of my favourites of hers and I think it's fantastic. And I truly do hope that the more and more t people speak about things like this, the more and more people can educate themselves on things like this, which is something I am going to commit to doing now because I, I want to learn more, especially considering I'm now opening up the realm of TFNL coaching in the next couple of weeks. I want to be able to best benefit as many clients as possible and fully understand as much about each client and things as important as menstrual cycles as possible. Definitely worth watching, big fan of Natasha, big fan of that video, and I really hope more research comes to light so we can really delve into the evidence and truly see what the science and the data says, rather than having to theorize and hypothesize so many things without anything to back it up because it's never been tested. Now we'll very quickly crack on the comment question of the week, and I won't keep you too long because I have waffled as per. I do endurance sports, but I love weight training and resistance training. However, I feel like that is not always complementary to my sports, Mostly people tell me this. So I tend to prioritize bodyweight workouts and do weights once a week. And it's an absolute treat. And I also practice Ashtanga. So you know I'm really flexible. I believe that's a form of yoga. I might be wrong. I may have butchered that pronunciation as well. Is weightlifting compatible? So essentially the question is, is weightlifting compatible with things like long distance running and endurance based sports? And the short answer is, 
Absolutely. So one of my clients back in the day was a marathon runner. They were they were prepping for the London Marathon. And there's actually a lot of research supporting developing strength via resistance training to better improve endurance sport performance. We've got to think about things like improving muscle efficiency, so how efficiently your muscles are working, improving how much force they can output for a longer period of time. So many things like that. So if you can work more efficiently, that's only going to benefit your endurance training. And if you can output more force over a longer period of time, that's again only going to benefit your endurance training. Do you want to get big and muscly and huge? Probably not because it's going to slow you down due to additional weight, but do you want to develop a bit more muscle and also develop more strength so you can tick those boxes I previously mentioned to then better perform in an endurance environment? Absolutely. So I think it very much comes down to Yes, I would certainly resistance train if you're able to, but again, I probably wouldn't prioritize it. You've got to consider things like specificity. If endurance training is your primary goal, then you want to do everything you can do to optimize that goal. Resistance training can certainly aid in the optimization of that goal, but if you place too much emphasis on resistance training, specificity is now shifting from endurance training and going more towards hypertrophy, so you're almost taking some water from the glass of endurance training and pour it into the hypertrophy glass. Again, it really depends on the person, but I, I would definitely consider maybe doing Doing resistance training a couple of times a week on top of your endurance training to supplement and enhance that endurance training but yeah that's a bloody good question big fan of that but again that is largely the video if you like the video then please let me know you like the video by liking the video 1300 likes is the goal so if we reach out i would really appreciate it if you haven't already please consider tickling the red button down below to subscribe to the channel and maybe even the bell next to it so you get notified when i upload every week twice a week and if you too have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video then please do consider dropping it down below in the comment section for comment question of the week and i shall do so thank you for tolerating me thank you for tolerating my additional layer of cat hair which you probably can't even see but i can and thank you for tolerating the video.